Hello, and welcome to another episode of the research page. In this episode, we're going to talk about camera movement and how it can take something that is otherwise boring and make it engaging. Uh, this will be a continuation of last week's episode, and as promised, we're actually going to make an adjustable curved track to capture movement. At the end of this episode, you'll have the opportunity to see a scene as shot from a stationary position as well as with some camera movement added to bring it alive. First and foremost, we're going to take a look at the DIY part of this episode. We start with a 1 and 5 16 board hole top to bottom 20 inches apart. Then we use a simple wire cord with a couple of S hooks and this actually creates our arc fully adjustable. Once we have our separators, we start center going left and right and now we have our track. Now as you can see from this shot she is stationary and we can see that she's angry but the entire piece is taken from that one perspective. It gets very boring after the first couple seconds. We're going to add our adjustable track with just a slight arch and we're going to move the camera and see if we can't make that pop a little. Now, as you can see after having seen that movement added to you get what is seemingly the same exact angry argument you can see how you get pulled in, how it becomes more engaging. Something that is otherwise boring has now been brought to life. Okay, in this demonstration of the dolly on the track, you can see that I've added a couple of arabics weights to the actual feet of the tripod. This was just to make me feel a little bit more comfortable and make sure that that connection to the track was durable. And as we can see here, the entire move is being done with no more than two fingers from start to finish. That's how smooth the track and dolly system actually is. Now, as mentioned on the Facebook forums, you can use an item called a gripper clip. You can attach these gripper clips to a 2x4 exactly 20 inches apart center to center. You now have the same exact result as my PVC separator without the need for a machine shop. Now, if you like what you've seen herein, please comment, rate, and or subscribe. And as always, stay tuned next Monday for another episode of The Research Page. This is JR signing out. You can find all the measurements used to create the separator in the description of this video.